It's right with the slight height advantage at 5, 10 and a half, an inch taller than Keith. Both fighters weighed in at 153 and three quarters for Wright, 154 pounds for Mellings. Mullings, both fighters stepped on our scales today, and you can see Keith Mullings gaining 15 pounds from the weigh-in till now with the fight about to commence. Mullings owns a two-inch reach advantage. All right, it's time now to meet the fighters. Let's send it back over to Ed Lover. Thank you, Fred. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet the first fighter of this evening? Please give it up for Brooklyn's own Keith Mullings. Keith Mullings has only fought 23 times in his seven-year career, but each of his last five fights has been a world championship battle. Definitely, Kevin, a tough customer. Definitely, he's been to everything, including Desert Storm. He's here tonight to take on Winky Wright. Another tough fight in his life. I tell you, right now, he has nothing to lose, and a man in his position is very, very dangerous for a guy like Winky Wright. Well, Mullings told us yesterday he knows that this is his, perhaps his final chance. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to meet the second fighter this evening? Please put your hands together for Ronald Winky Wright! <laughs> This is Wright's second appearance on KO Nation and third total on HBO. His controversial loss to Fernando Vargas one year ago actually elevated his status. And now Wright is a mandatory challenger, hoping to get a shot at Felix Trinidad. While he's in line right now, taking a dangerous fight like Keith Mullins, who, who pulled the hopes of Terry Norris when he pulled the fight Oscar De La Hoya. So uh, like I said, he's in the night with a big, big puncher. And right now, tonight, I'm sure that Winky Wright right now is looking to show us and show the world that he's ready for Trinidad. All right, Kevin, let's send it up to Ed Lover for the official introductions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our first bout of this evening is 12 rounds of action in the junior middleweight division. First, let's meet our judges. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Dana DePaulo. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, George Hill. And also from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Adelaide Triplett. Our referee in charge of the action, Ernie Sharif. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the principals. First, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 154 pounds. He brings it to the ring, a record of 16 wins, six losses. One draw and 11 wins coming by knockout. Please give it up for him from Brooklyn, New York, Keith Mully. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 153 and three quarter pounds. He brings it to the ring, a record of 40 wins, three losses, and 24 of those wins coming by knockout from St. Petersburg, Florida. Please give it up for Ronald Winky Wright. Come on. 
instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Keep it real, keep it fair, and come out and fight. Good fight. Let's go. All right, so we're set for the action to begin. Let's take a look and see who our internet audience thinks will win the fight. 69% to 31. Our fans watching believe Winky Wright should handle Keith Mullings. Mullings is key. He will try to get inside the long jab of the southpaw, Ronald Winky Wright. We're underway, the first of 12 between Mullings and Wright. Well, the one thing that Mullins did right away is do a straight right hand at right. And um, that's what he has to do tonight, but he has to do it off a jab to be effective. Like I said, there he goes to the body right away. He's got to implicate, implement that right away. Body attack, body attack. Because right is very quick, very tall, and very long. And I tell you, he can keep you at the end of that reach all night long. The last two times we've seen Winky Wright, he took on Fernando Vargas a year ago and lost a very controversial split decision. Keep him up, Terry. I thought he won that, Fran. I, I really thought he won that fight in the... Uh, He's back on trial. I tell you, he didn't let it discourage him at all. And also, our check data was a majority decision. And also, then he fought Bronco McCart in September. That was a unanimous decision victory for Winky Wright. His style normally is to stay outside and work the jab. But in both of those fights, Winky elected to stand right in front of his opponents, Vargas and McCart, and bang. Well, the big thing is he probably had the advantage on uh, on Vargas. He probably had the advantage, you know, a few times, a few fights he's, he's laid in the pocket, as we call it in the box, and stayed on the inside to exchange. We told you about Wright's injured left wrist in sparring about three weeks ago. Thought about pulling out of the fight, but then realized he claims he might not have had another TV date anytime soon. Didn't want to pass up the opportunity to showcase his skills to the American public. The one dangerous thing Wright is doing right now, he's standing right in front of Mullings. He's not being fleet footed like he usually is, utilizing the jab a lot better, more effective, and keeping Mullings on the outside. Mullings is getting on the inside and landing punches. Winky Wright has only unleashed his left hand twice so far in the first round. He told us it wouldn't have an effect on him mentally. You disagreed at the beginning of the show, and so far, Winky Wright not letting his left hand go. Well, the big thing, like I said, when he throws it, he's got to make it count. Because if you're going to injure it, he don't want to injure it this early in a fight. He'd rather do it around 8-9 if he has a comfortable lead. Keith Mullins has never been knocked down in his career. He's lost six times, four of those losses coming on split decisions. And if you ask Mullings, he says he was robbed in most of them. When I had talked to um, Winky Wright earlier, he explained that he would like to get a knockout tonight. Mullings doing work to the body as the first round comes to a close. I heard on that last one. I know you did. Breathe. Breathe. Alright, we, we need to work the jab more, Wayne. Let the left hand go. Throw combinations. Alright? You're gonna load, load up on the last punch. We need more punches. The round was close. The round was close. In the air, Mike. Deliver that right hand. Step over and hit him with that left hook. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, then. All right. Let's see you pull it off on me, okay? Straight right hand, step over and hit him with the left hook. He's open for it, okay? Inside both corners. You heard Dan Birmingham, the trainer for Winky Wright, ask his fighter to let go of that left hand. Kevin, you say that you'll be able to tell if, in fact, Winky Wright injures his left hand during the spell. But usually, 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 most of the time, usually, as they say, 
punch. A fighter shows you some sign of discomfort when he hurts his hand. And uh, right, I think it's no different. I believe when he hurts that hand, we will know about it. So stop utilizing it as much as he's utilizing it right now. He'll start picking his punches with his right, his right jab and his right hook. Um, Mullins is giving him all the opportunity to throw it by staying in front of him, but uh, he's not even punching to the soft tissue area like the body. The first round indicative of both fighters' styles. Right connecting. Eight of his 12 shots that landed were jabs. Meanwhile, Mullings, seven of his eight that landed power shots. Both fighters sticking to the script. Right unloads with a right hook and comes back, doubles up with a right hand, an uppercut and a hook, and now he lets the left hand go. I really thought Wright would be on the outside trying to box Mullins. Instead, he's uh, inviting Mullins in. He's fighting Mullins to fight. That's giving Mullins a lot of opportunity. And the last time we saw this was Terry Norris when uh, Mullins won the world title. Wright listening to the advice of his corner. Getting more comfortable, settling in, popping that jab. right hook that time another one to the head of Keith Mullins and one more for good measure right after watch out Mullins can punch Keith Mullins makes it very easy for you to find him he's not gonna run being the shorter fighter he has to get inside so Mullins stalking his way well, you gotta blame Wright for some of it. He's letting, allowing Mullen to walk in, get his punches off, and then he's throwing his own. He's taking more of a risk. When he could be on the outside, utilizing a jab. Wright rips off a shot to the midsection. Fires a strong one, too. <laughs> Winky Wright. Strong right hand counter. And rips off another one-two combination to the head of Keith Mullins. Winky Wright definitely busier in the second round. Straight crisp on the punches, but not back to the jab. Winky Wright trying to capitalize on the momentum he built in the second round. Keith Mullings hasn't fought in 16 months. His last bout was a championship match against David Reed. Reed won a unanimous decision. Mullings disputing whether Winky Wright, a three-punch combination there. Mullings disputing whether that decision was accurate. Yet it soundly looked like Reed controlled that fight by staying on the outside. Wright's doing some peculiar things here. He's stepping right into the right hand of Mullings, and Mullings is not throwing a straight right hand like most lefties get hit with. When he throws it, he lands it. But when he's not going it, it's when Wright is stepping right in front of it, he's throwing a straight right hand. And all that ring rush you talked about, Fran, you know, Mullins is allowed to shed it. Mullins trying to do work inside. Wright doing a good job of blocking most of those shots. Wright loads up for a right uppercut. Comes back with a left hook to the head. Mullins 
doing something that's very dangerous for a right. He's leaning forward with his head, and if he hits the top of the head with that left hand, he can refracture that wrist. Winky Wright, a mandatory challenger for Felix Trinidad. Not sure if or when he will actually get the opportunity to fight Trinidad. But he clearly understands the stronger performances that he has will make that fight more enticing. The public will demand to see it. It would definitely enhance his chances of it happening, of happening. But the one thing that he can't make a mistake is do is stand in front of this man, Trinidad, like he's standing in front of Keith Mullins. Right working the jab, Mullins firing off power punches. Both of those shots from Mullins blocked by Wright. Wright probably does not feel threatened by Mullins. Uh, punching power, or letting him on the inside, that's why allowing him on the inside. Now he's tactically boxing him. Left and right movement, good jab. He's keeping Mullins at the end of the jab, like I said earlier. And that's what Mullins got to be all night. Mullins has his moments. He gets on the inside, but they're too few and frequent. Both fighters, former world champions, trying to elevate their status back to a higher stage. So ringside score, Julie Letterman to see how she has it for three. Julie? Fran, I've got this two rounds to one, 29-28 for Winky Wright. You know, in the first round, Keith Mullins was able to land those crisp body shots while Winky Wright would just stick his arm out just to measure him. Now Winky's got his movement going, moving side to side, staying away from Keith Mullins' right hand. Like right there, we see Keith Mullins lunging because Winky Wright is on the move. In the third round, Wright firing 70 punches, landing at a connect rate of 39%. Meanwhile, Mullins threw 49 punches, but landed just eight. And now, Winky Wright trying to get off the center of the ring, showing more movement than he did in the previous rounds, definitely getting loose. This is what kind of fight I thought it was going to be from the first round. I guess Winky Wright wanted to see what Mullins had early. It's very dangerous tactics, but it worked out. Now he's back on the balls of his feet, dancing around, sticking and moving. One thing about Mullins, he's very tough. One of his good friends, light heavyweight champion Roy Jones Jr. Spent about six years sparring with Jones. Jones has nothing but nice things to say about Mullings' boxing skills. I think that Mullins should be used to this kind of speed, this kind of reflexes, um, snappy jab. He should know how to get inside. He's pretty sure he had to do it in the joint Roy. But he's not effectively doing it here tonight. Right showing a little bit more speed than Mullins. Seems to have a half-step advantage. Mullins is sitting by the wayside waiting for Wright to stop so he can hit him. That's not going to happen. He has to slow down Wright like he did in the first round with effective body punches. If he doesn't go to the body, Wright will do this for the, the next eight rounds. Wright with a low blow right there, acknowledging it. Both fighters continue on. This isn't the first time that Winky Wright has stepped into a ring. With an injury, when he fought Vargas, he said he had a fractured right thumb. And that was the main 
reason why he decided to stand toe to toe because he figured he couldn't utilize his jab effectively because of the injury. He's got an incredible jab, Winky Wright. I, I gotta give him kudos on that. I think that his jab is his most effective weapon. It's so crisp and so straight. Very sharp jab. Seems to be getting back to the style that he grew up with fighting, which is movement and utilizing his jab. As they say, what got you there is going to keep you there, and, and he's getting back to it. Mullins in right. Come on. Come on. Fight. Playing cat right. and mouse at the end of the fourth. As you watch today's fights, log on to HBO.com slash KO Nation and choose Paul Spatafora's walkout sound. All right, now. Knockout Raquel Baldwin firing up the Lawrence Center crowd from Davenport, Iowa, formerly a New York City Knicks dancer. in Kevin it seems that Wright is controlling the tempo of the fight what does Keith Mullings need to do to turn things more into his favor okay he's got to get on the inside but he's got to do that over a jab he's right Watch now getting his eyes slides in when Wright throws his jab a lot shoot his own jab fall it and punch to the body right now Wright is, has good legs he's going to fall to his feet he's moving around also another thing that Mullins not doing it, Julie, we talked about, is he's not cutting the ring off. He's got to cut the ring off. He's got to stop that movement of Wright, and he's not doing that. He's just following right around the ring, and Wright's going to oblige him by hitting with the jab all day. Wright was a fighter that not many people knew much about. His first 16 fights hailed in his home state of Florida. He was 16 and 11 knockouts. Since then, he's fought 20 fights overseas. Just, just now, people starting to get a good look at Winky Wright. Another major obstacle that Mullins has to overcome, he's fighting a southpaw. He's got those straight right hands. He has to get his left foot outside of Winky Wright's right foot. That's another problem that he's having. We'll talk more about that when our main event commences between Paul Spatafora and Bill Irwin. Mullins right now is stepping right in front of Winky Wright's left hand. Mullins now trying to get off. Mullen needs to stay in range like he just did. Don't step away from Wright. Every time he steps away, he loses his range, and then he's got to make up his difference. And Wright is not allowing him to just walk in. <laughs> you can tell both of these fighters are in excellent condition. For pretty much his entire career, Wright has fought at about 150, 54, 55 pounds. He's got great hand speed at the weight class. Connects to Mullins on the head, and now right senses he could do some damage. Mullins up against the ropes, and right now trying to get off. A right hook to the body from Winky Wright. Mullins steadies the shit, pushes the action back into the center of the ring, and goes to work on Wright's body. Mullins is still dangerous. You have to watch out. Don't open up too wide and go for the attack. Mullins will throw a hook. We could be in for the long haul between Winky Wright and Keith Mullins. Both of these fighters very difficult to knock down. All right. What's that apple? No water.
Yeah, get that left hook in motion, Chief. That's what I want you to do. Your left hook has got to get in motion. You understand what I mean? Got you. Huh? Even, I got you moving the, to, to, to your right now, yeah. okay? You're moving into his power so that you can hit him with the right hand and come back to the left hook. Got you. Huh? You know, the, the way to fight this guy. Here's the punch. Of, here's the punch with the right corner. It looks like it sparkled him a little bit. Overhand right. Same overhand right. Catch him with. Look like Mullins might have been in trouble. Just maybe going down from the shot. Mullins rocked a little bit, but definitely steadied his legs, and he came right back out. The key to Winky Wright's arsenal is very fast. Right jab. Throughout the fight, Mullings has been catching plenty of Wright's jabs. Wright landing 66. Mullins just three jabs. Well, if Mullins is waiting for Wright to slow down and stop so he can be hit, it's never going to happen. Mullins has to take the initiative and slow down Wright, cut the ring off, throw his jab, hit to the body. Well, he's going to be chasing Wright all night long like this if he doesn't do it, take affirmative action and do it right away. It's a problem that he had against David Reed. It's also a problem that he had in his fight before that with Jorge Castillo, where he lost his world championship back in January of 99. Some fighters just can't hit a mover. Sometimes fighters have that problem. And now we got a quick mover, who's very fast, and he's lefty at that. Right. Doubling up with one two. So far, absolutely no problems for Winky Wright with his left wrist. Slaps Mullins with a right hand. Like me and Julie said earlier, Mullins is just following him around. He's not cutting the ring off, taking the angle, taking the initiative. He's not jabbing his way in. I don't know when he's going to try to implement his attack. We're halfway through this fight, and he's doing the same thing. Mullins understands at 32 years of age, he'll be 33 next month, that he won't get that many more opportunities to have a chance to take on some of the elite competition in the division. Yet he cannot find a way to combat the quicker Winky Wright. But he's not fighting like a man that's in desperation, a man that really needs a win here. He's like going with the flow, going with the action, allowing Wright to do what he wants to do. And Wright is doing a very good job at it too. Wright continues to pop his jab. You get the sense, Kevin, that, that Winky feels he's in complete control. He can do pretty much anything that he wants. Oh, he is in control. You can believe that. He is definitely in control. December 20th at 9 p.m., Sports of the 20th Century presents Playing the Field, Sports and Sex in America, a documentary that explores how sex has influenced the world of sports. There are some fighters in that Come special on, as well. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, every sport is affected by sex, including yeah, boxing. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After you push, push him back, don't step back. He's getting Come tired because uh, you're making him work harder than he wants. Okay. Come on, listen to it. Oh. Okay, stand up. This 12-round bout between junior middleweights Ronald Winky Wright and Keith Mullins. 
Wright looks so relaxed, so comfortable right now. He's jabbing when he feels like it. He's punching. He's got his hands a little bit lower, taking a little more risk, a little more chances. Mullins right now is implicating, the, implementing the same thing he did the last round. He's just following right around. One thing I've learned from both you and Julie, both of you say styles make fights. And certainly the style of these two fighters plays completely into the favor of Winky Wright. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it could be a competitive fight, a more competitive fight, if Mullings was doing the things that he's supposed to be doing by cutting the ring off and punching to the body, rather than lunging like he just did at Winky Wright. Right on the other hand is the outside boxer, quick movement, quick hands, fast feet, and he's doing what he's supposed to do. In the early going, right, stood pretty much toe to toe with Mullins, almost to say, let me see what you got. Hit me with what you have, and let me see if I can take it. Very dangerous tactic. A lot of fighters have done that and have been knocked out in the first round. But since then, it seems as if he's realized his best fight is to employ some movement. It's very, it's very strange, you know, you don't want to make those assumptions. Go in there and find out what he's got. You find out what he's got is he hits hard and he knocks you out. Could have dynamite in there, huh? You never know. Never find out. Hey, don't open up Padera's box unless you have to. It seems every time Mullins gets inside, Watch the head, baby. Watch he the can't head. let his hands go quick enough. Watch the head. Doesn't really seem to be connecting on the body punches. Yeah, they just won two punches. You know, Wright's blocking half the punch with his arm. He's got good defense. Um, now he comes back. You know, he lets Mullins get his little punches off. You know, he gets, he gets Mullins a little confident. Then he tries to hit him again. Wright is finding right tactical fights. Mullins right now is trying to find himself a tactical fight instead of making one of his own. Winky Wright right now unloading a number of straight right hand jabs and left hands to the head trying to break through the defense of Keith Mullins. Mullins is up, has abandoned the jab, loading, leaping, reaching. You're never going to get the right like that. Never. A very clean fight as we head to the close of the seventh round. Both fighters acting in a very professional manner, but it's Winky Wright who is certainly getting the best of Keith Mullins. overhand punches, straight punches. I mean, he's doing it all night. Mullins is standing right in front of him. I see right throwing an overhand left, underneath, over. He's doing whatever he wants to do. He's actually creating his combinations as he's throwing them. They go that jab again. He's utilizing the jab. He was on uppercuts underneath. There's not much that he hasn't done to Mullins. Winky Wright told us that yesterday right here. Take his right punch combination he was going to go to the head instead of the body because of the injury to his left wrist. And he's following the script. Let's bring in Julie Letterman through seven rounds. Julie? France, 6 to 1, 69 64, Winky Wright. You know, you hit it right on the nose. Styles make fights, and Keith Mullins cannot fight a southpaw. He keeps Winky Wright moving. Jab, jab, right hand, left hand. Beautiful, beautiful combinations. And then Keith Mullins leads and winds up hitting Winky Wright in the back. Beautiful fight for Winky Wright using his southpaw advantage. Like Julie said, the boxer is beating the slugger. Right here. Mullins is the slugger, writes the boxer. He's out boxing Mullins. He's not making it into a war like he did the first round. He's not allowing Mullins to have the opportunities that he had in the first round. Mullins has to make the opportunities happen for himself, and he's not doing that. Kevin, explain the strategy by Wright. Him saying he's going to go to the head if the wrist is bothering him, as opposed to using his left hand to go to the body. 
I guess he feels that, you know, when you go to the body, that's a commitment punch. You make a total commitment punch into the body, which leaves you wide open. And I believe he's going to the head and taking a risk of the hand because he knows he outspeeds him. He's got the reach on him with the jab. So I can only figure that. But my strategy would be punch the shoulders. You don't have to hit the stomach. You can punch the shoulders. You can punch the arms. You can punch anything that's a soft area rather than hit the head. Winky right slips. That is not a knockdown. Hey. Referee Ernie Sharif wipes off the gloves and says, let's go. So you hit whatever man gives you. You don't have to hit the face. You can punch the arms, you can punch the chest area, you can punch the shoulders, bring his arms down. So, you know, Winky Wright has options here. You know, he don't have to punch him in the head. The forehead, first of all, the heavy, the hardest part, the punch. You break your hand like that. So, Winky Wright's finding a very tactical, smart fight right now. Does it almost look like a sparring session, Kevin? For right, it does. <laughs> I know, but not Mullins. For right, it does. Tapping with your forehead. Step back, please. Take a step back. Fight. Mullins is trying to get there, and Wright is just doing what he wants to do naturally. I mean, look at his hands. His hands are down. He's feeling really good about what he's doing. He feels effectively winning this fight, throwing combinations. He's stepping around. He's stepping into the right hand of Mullins. I don't think he believes that Mullins could hurt him at this point of the fight. Hey, watch the clinch. Winky Wright simply too quick for Keith Mullins. Putting on a clinic. Come on, come on. Wright complaining of a headbutt for both fighters. Acknowledging the situation. All right. Come on. Come on. I did not fuck that last one. No. You ain't got a mark on you anyway. Breathe, breathe. Breathe. I got a headache now. Do you? All right. Shake it off. You got three rounds to go. Going into the night. Boxing and boxing. Don't worry about taking a guy. Let's win the fight. I'm hand punching. Okay. Both of them. All right. All right. Yeah. We still got to close. Then we can get close to him. You got a punching combination. Go ahead. Short right hand, the foot right hand. Yeah. His right hand's dropping now. He's getting tired. All right. That's but you got to impress your will on him now. All right. Okay. Hold the fight. Come on. Come on. Second time. Come on. Impress your will on him. That's it. Right. Winky Wright has thrown 160 more punches than Keith Mullins through eight rounds. I think Mullins is not doing it. Started coming to uh, my knowledge as late. Um, Mullins is not moving his head at all. I mean, that's another reason he's getting hit with all those punches that Wright's throwing. He's not moving his head at all. You know, the head is the heavy, the hardest part to hit. And he's leaving his head right there for right to catch him all night long. And he needs to move his head, back, move his back, arms, with a jab clean. going. Watch your elbow, all right? I mean, hey. He's got to get a lot closer, be more effective. One thing we do know about Mullen, definitely hasn't been rattled so far, and he's taken quite a bit of punishment. Mullen started his boxing career in the Army, and he spent time in the Persian Gulf War as an artillery gunner. He told us that was a war in boxing is the same thing. He's very smart right now doing tactical things. He's punching the arms of uh, right, trying to slow him down, using that army training. Uh, being a combatant, that's what you are when you're in. It is a war. You know, desert storm every time you're in there. In between rounds, Wright's corner told him, look, just win the fight. No need to try and get a knockout. And Wright adhering to the advice of his corner. Mullins, though, trying to make something happen. This is the best round Mullins has had. Judy just talked about it with me. Um, in a few rounds, I said the first round. Wright, I, I don't blame it so much on Mullins, I blame it on Wright. Wright's not moving around, he's not jabbing. He's not doing what got him there. He's standing, standing and making Mullins much more effective. 
Right now, trying to go to the uppercut. There's another right uppercut. And another. Mullins comes right back. Right though, working the left hand, puts together a beautiful combination. He's going to the body right now. He's doing what, it's funny. He's doing what Mullins should be doing. And Mullins is, is fighting a fight where he's just going forward. And Wright's going to the body. Underneath, he's taking, he's blocking shots with his arms. He's more effective right now than Mullins at Mullins attack. Even though Mullins is having a better round. Mullins starting to show some life here in the ninth round. Winky Wright deciding not to move as much, to stand toe to toe. Like I said, I, I probably feel that he can't be hurt by Mullins' punch. Mullins probably don't hit hard enough to him. And he's having a very effective fight here. Well, one of the criticisms of Wright in the Vargas fight was that he took the final three rounds off. Still to come, there's lightweight champion Paul Spadafora getting ready to defend his title against Billy the Kid Irwin. It's coming up immediately following Wright and Mullins. Chopping it up though. Good, there you go. Just block. Right, come on now, stand up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right, let's go. Same thing this round. Step back, step back, step back, step back, step back. Step back. Box him, box him. There you see our internet audience begging for a little bit more bang here. I, you know, they can tell it to Mullins, but don't tell it to Wright. Wright's doing what he's supposed to do. He's boxing very smartly. I mean, you know, one thing is certain. The audience is not getting hit with those punches. <laughs> Wright will be, so Wright's playing a very smart fight. He's doing what he has to do to win. Right now, letting his hands go. Mullins has to get a little closer than he's been getting. Throw some more punches. He still, you know, has the, we're in the 10th round right now, and he has not put into effect the style of cutting the ring off and punching to the body. And it's starting to show now because Wright right now is filling the balls with his feet, moving around, dancing around, utilizing the jab. A sense of desperation might be settling in for Keith Mullins. Step back, please. Come on. Let's grab his arm. Wright has looked very Wait. strong throughout the entire fight. Watch your head, Chad. Neither of these fighters has been knocked down. Keep your head to yourself. In the 10th, 11th, or 12th round. Right now, like I said, as the fight goes on, the shots that right from going don't seem to have an effect on Mullins at all. He's still there. And it looked to me just now that Wright shook his hand after he landed a straight left hand. But he threw it again, so I don't think he hurt it. I can't say he hurt his hand. The chances of Mullins coming up, though, with a knockout. There's two Don't. chances. 11 to 12th round is slim and none. Um, the way this fight's going right now. Watch your head. You stuck your head with down. With the confidence of right, right doesn't look All like right. he's in any kind of trouble of being knocked out. <laughs> and he's on soon. Right now, turning up the power here in the 10th round. Step back, now watch Now watch the grabbing his head. Now step back. Watch that wrestling. Every time Wright lays in front of Mullins, he allows Mullins to get on the inside, throw his punches, and that actually pulls Mullins back into the round. It doesn't pull him into the fight, but it pulls him back into the round. This is the second time that you've seen Winky Wright on KO Nation. How do you think he's fair against the top-notch competition? I think, I believe we are watching the top-notch competition. I believe that you know, he's a very good fighter, very good hand speed, reflexes, and um, a lot of people thought he beat Vargas. And I believe that, you know, he would do farewell against Trinidad and the rest of the top fighters on Ike Porte and the fighters at the top echelon of boxing right now. Uh -huh. I got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, you're right. Come on, take a deep breath now. Come on, take a deep breath. Come on. And let it out slow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do it again. Come on. Not a deep one. Keith, you got two more rounds now. Okay. Come on now. Come on, you want to get inside and do nothing. I feel more safe with it. Because he's rushing in with his head. Here we got. We got Wright making Mullins miss and countering. It's called the hit, make a miss, and make him pay. And this is what Wright's doing all night. He's making a miss, and he misses right there, and he counters immediately right away with two shots. I got the stool. Ronald Winky Wright putting on a professional boxing clinic here against Keith Mullins as we head into the 11th round. Our internet audience believes that Mullins definitely needs a knockout to go home the victor. Well, if I'm sure, pretty sure if, if Mullins was back in Brooklyn, they would tell him he needs a ghetto get back. Right now, he's got to get a knockout to come back. And um, Mullins right now has got to get on top of Wright, even make that happen, and he's not. Wright is boxing very beautifully around the ring. Jabbing, sticking, moving, using his leverage, using his reach. Basically, what can Keith Mullings expect for the remainder of his career if this fight does not work in his favor? Not much, you know. Um, you go further down the ladder, not too far, because he lost to a caliber of opposition like Winky Wright. But um, he'll stay in the, probably in the top 10, lower echelon of the top 10. Um, hopefully that he uh, gets a call as an opponent for somebody. Maybe an Ike Corte. Um, maybe a Trinidad again will call. You know, sometimes there are benefits in losing. There are some benefits in losing. Believe it or not, there are. Julie just brought to my attention also a second ago that Winky Wright's mouth is open. Um, can and breathe a little bit. You know, Mons is throwing some effective body punches. And maybe they're starting to take their toll, but it's kind of late in the fight to take their toll. We're not in 15-round territory, or in 12. Right, snaps back the head of Mullins with a strong right uppercut. We haven't seen any signs of him of right re-injuring that left hand at all tonight. He landed it beautifully, precisely. Um, he threw it frequently. Winky Wright told us, even though he injured his left wrist, he was not about to sit out this edition of KO Nation. He felt that if he didn't appear, his stock would go down, and he wouldn't get the respect that he deserves. Well, he wants to create that interest between him and Trinidad. He knows that he's active when people see him. You know they say, out of sight, out of mind. Winky Wright, hardly out of sight here at the Lawrence Convention Center against Keith Mullins. Sit down, sit down. There you go. This is your last round. Look at you. Twelfth round. Championship round. Championship round. All right. Championship round. All right. I want you to double your punches up even more than you did just then. All right. Cool. That was a good round for you. All right. But you got to punch him a little bit more. Okay. Just bounce and box, okay? Bounce and box. Don't lay there. Last round. Touch him up, champ. Part of a champion. Breathe. 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 Go around your fight. No good. My hands just. So I got you. Okay. Need this round. All right. All right. You hear what I say now? I heard you. You got it, brother, man. This is your guy. Okay. This is a man's down. Let up. Okay, second time. Second time. Stay busy. 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 Stay bus
Last round, touch him up. Good champ. There you go. Great fight. All right, the 12th and final round. Let's bring in Julie Letterman to see how she has it as we enter the final round. Fan 108, 101, nine rounds to two. Winky right. You know, he is out boxing Keith Mullins, but you know what? In that ninth round, he let Keith Mullins get in close. I think he's getting, he got a little bit tight, and Keith Mullins was able to bang the body, and that's why I gave Keith Mullins the ninth round. But overall, beautiful boxing skills by Winky Wright. Good ring generalship. Easy fight for Winky Wright, 9-2. to two. Winky Wright threw 47 punches in the 11th round to Keith Mullins, 70. And one of the reasons may be he told his corner that not just his left hand, but his right hand is hurt as well. And I noticed that in the last round, he started shaking both of his hands, one right before the bell rang, and uh, that's signs of uh, he might have re-injured his left hand. Right now, catches Mullins with a right hook. It's like they say, you know, um, Mullins has a very tough, tough chin, very solid head. Right's been hitting it all night, and now his arms are killing him. Step Give back Keith clean. Mullins Step back credit. Step back clean. Hey. Never really gave up in this fight, but never really got into the flow of the fight. Never really was able to seize upon his game plan. And Winky Wright basically put on a clinic. Well, we got to blame that on Winky Wright. Winky Wright did some right things. Um, in the first round, he did he didn't fight tactical enough. He didn't box him. But as the fight went on, he started coming into grips with his style. And once he did that, he was able to implement his jab, his punches like he just did. Uh, keep Mullins at the end of his reach, which I said he would do. And this is why he's so effective tonight. Styles make fights, and Winky Wright's style is most effective on a guy like Mullins. Winky Wright told us he wants to stay on the consciousness of the American fighting public. He feels that he put together a solid effort against Fernando Vargas one year ago, even though he lost that fight. But he easily handled Bronco McCart back in September. And he believes this is just one step up to the top level. He also told us he would like to get a knockout of Mullins tonight. And I guess trying to do it, he hurt both of his hands. Now we see that, hey, maybe he was wrong. He was smart enough to fight the fight that he believed would earn him the victory. Here's All what right. our internet audience what up? believes. Yeah. Winky Wright won the fight going away. No, Kevin, I have to agree. I got to agree. I scored it on my card, my official score cards. I mean, I only gave uh, Mullins one round. Very good fight. Um, Appreciate it. I believe that Wright has definitely took this fight and showed the American public exactly what he wants to show him. Even though he didn't receive a knockout like he wanted, but he looked very good tonight in beating Mullins. All right, well, let's take a look at the CompuBox. Final punch dad numbers between Keith Mullins and Arano, the Winky Wright. And there you see the story of the fight. Winky Wright throwing almost four times as many jabs as Keith Mullings. Mullings landing just four, and Wright really controlled the fight with that jab. Kevin, will Winky Wright get an opportunity to fight Felix Trinidad in the near future? You know, you never know about those things. You know, Winky Wright is, sometimes fighters avoid a fighter like a guy like Winky Wright like they have in the past. He's a southpaw with great hand speed, good movement, has a decent punch, looked like he exhibited that tonight. Even though he didn't get a knockout, um, he's got all the tools. 
Um, but then again, on the other hand, he could be on, he's a mandatory for Trinidad's title, so maybe Trinidad will be forced into a fight with him. All right, let's send it up to Ed Lover with the official decision. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I announce the official decision, let's have a nice round of applause for both of these fighters, please. Judge Dana DePaulo scores about 116 to 112. Judge George Hill scores about 118, 110. And Judge Adelaide Triplett scores about 120, 108 for the winner by unanimous decision, Ronald Winky Rye. We'll talk to the winner, Ronald Winky, right in just a moment. Still to come, lightweight champion Paul Spatafora puts his title on the line against mandatory challenger Billy Irwin, who's waited a long time to get a championship shot. More now on some future fights. On HBO, look for these upcoming shows. January 13th features heavyweight Michael Grant taking on Alicia Castillo, plus Vernon Forrest versus Raul French. January 20th in what could be the fight of the year. Floyd Mayweather defends his super featherweight title against Diego Corrales. And each Thursday, tune into Inside the NFL. Join Dan Marino and all the guys for highlights, predictions, and analysis right through Super Bowl 35. On December 20th at 9 p.m., Sports of the 20th Century presents Playing the Field, Sports and Sex in America, a documentary that explores how sex has influenced the world of sports and how the world of sports has helped shape this country's idea of sexuality. And coming in February, the documentary Do You Believe in Miracles? The story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. All right, we're standing here now with the winner, Ronald Winky Wright. Winky, a unanimous decision. You pretty much had your way in there. First off, though, tell me about the status of both of your hands. Uh, both hands hurting real bad. Uh, the left was already sore, but I kept using it. But from throwing so many jabs, I think I broke my middle knuckle. He got a hard head. He's a tough fighter. I knew it was going to be tough. I took this fight with a hurt hand to show the fans that, you know, I can adapt. I can fight anybody. Yeah. And uh, when the time comes to fight a better fighter, then I'm going to do it. Okay, it's the third time you've showcased your skills on HBO. You believe you're ready for a shot at Felix Trinidad. Oh, Trinidad is a great fighter. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to fight him different than I fought him. Uh, you know, I felt that uh, Keith couldn't really hurt me, but he was throwing good shots. He's a, he's a tough champion, you know, and he'd never been stopped, and I was trying to stop him. I hurt him with a hook, but like I say, both of my hands was hurting. I couldn't finish him off. But all, all praise to him. He's a good fighter. And, okay. Uh, I would just want to thank uh, Lou DiBella and HBO for giving me the shot. And we're going to take it all the way. All right, Winky okay, Wright, congratulations. <laughs> I will be easy. Okay, so hopefully we will see Winky Wright in the future. Now let me bring in two-time featherweight champion Kevin Kelly for 